Hallo, hallo, dunja. Schmische Kai hat zu a gut falsch, kun video show kulturbit. Anju nischen skrudig et galarien ponita. Okay, enough with the gay look for now, but once again, Pokemon has taken me off guard with the release of new information, so we will get right into it with another quick fire Pokemon video. So, Galarian Ponyta, where did this thing come from? Well, the first pretty obvious thing about the Galarian Ponyta is the addition of a horn. Well, it's called a unique horn Pokemon after all. Wait, unique horn? Unique horn, unique horn, unicorn, 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 unicorn! I see what you did there, game freak. Mm, yes. Well, this is what excites me about the Galarian Ponyta. Ponyta here is shield surfetched, but instead of Wales being the main inspiration for its design, it's Scotland! Oh, hi, finally! But unfortunately, England has wiggled its way into this one too. But first, an introduction to unicorns. Did you know Scotland is the only country in the world to have a fictional animal as its national animal? The unicorn! So, why is this? Is it because Scotland is so awesome? Well, yes, of course, but there's also a bunch of historical reasons behind it too. Unicorns, though now associated with European fairy tales and Scotland and whatnot, weren't originally European. The unicorn actually started its life out depicted in ancient seals of the Indus Valley civilizations and was mentioned by the ancient Greeks in accounts of natural history. And the Bible also described an animal, the Reum, which some versions translate as unicorn, but this is probably just a bad mistranslation. The unicorn then eventually ended up as we know it today, and took its most well known form in European folklore. Here, the unicorn is often depicted as a white horse-like animal with a long horn on its head. In the Middle Ages and Renaissance, it was commonly described as an extremely wild woodland creature, a symbol of purity and grace which could only be captured by a virgin, which I guess means that the wider Pokemon fanbase shouldn't have any trouble trying to catch one, and its horse was said to have the power to render poisoned water drinkable and to heal sickness. And people of course tried to take advantage of this myth and sell narwhal tusks as unicorn horns. But this myth about unicorns being able to heal the sick and make unpotable water safe is where Galarian Ponyta gets its new ability from, Pastel Veil, which as the Pokemon website describes, prevents the Pokemon and its allies from becoming poisoned, and it can even cure the poison status condition of its allies when it enters the battlefield, straight from the unicorn myths. So where does Scotland fit into this in terms of it being our national animal and all? Well, the unicorn was believed to be the natural enemy of the lion, which was a symbol that the English royals adopted around 100 years before the Scots adopted the unicorn. And the unicorn was also chosen because it was seen as a proud and haughty beast which would rather die than be captured by anyone, just as Scots would fight to remain sovereign and unconquered by the English. And more than 300 years later, people are still trying. Why settle for a German Europe when you could have a Scottish world? <laughs> two unicorns supported the royal arms of the King of Scots, and since the 1707 Act of Union of England and Scotland, the royal arms of the UK have been supported by a unicorn along with an English lion. But the Scottish and English like to play a little game of sorts, where two versions of the royal arms exist. The one used in Scotland gives more emphasis to the Scottish elements, placing the unicorn on the left and giving it a crown, whereas the version used in England and elsewhere gives the English elements more prominence. This is about as subtle as it gets with the Scots, though as half and half I'm surprised that one side of my body hasn't started fighting the other yet. Galarian Ponyta also somewhat reminds me of Kelpies, shape-shifting water spirits that inhabit the locks and pools of Scotland. Loch is a Gaelic word which means lake or sea inlet, but today refers to these massive, usually very deep lakes in the north of Scotland, the most famous one of course being Loch Ness. Kelpies, though shape-shifting, have mostly been described as taking the shape of a horse, with this being their normal form. Today actually, the most well-known contemporary depiction of them are these two statues outside of the town of Falkirk, known as the Kelpies. And pretty much every large body of water in the country has a Kelpie story attached to it. Just be careful if you see a supple lady come out the water with water weeds in her hair, for she's a kelpie and will drag you down to the depths of the loch, devour you and throw your entrails to the water's edge for someone else to discover. Though it's debatable how much kelpies have influenced this new form, as it's psychic, not water type. Though it is possible that this psychic typing has something to do with the kelpie's ability to shapeshift and manipulate and capture its prey. I don't know. The last likely source used for this design, apart from the Scottish unicorn, is, to my dismay, sadly, from the south of England. Oh, whatever. You southerners get a whole region and we can't even get one Pokemon which doesn't have anything to do with you? Game Freak, would it kill you to look a little further afield? I know you call the entire UK Igirisu in Japanese, but the UK is not just London. Is that too much to ask? Is it? Anyways. 
This source is the Colt Pixie, a creature from English folklore in the south and southwest of England, especially the New Forest and Dorset. According to the local mythos, it is a type of pixie which takes the form of a scruffy pale horse or pony, much like our ponyta, to lead travellers and other livestock astray. Similar to the Will-O-Wisp, you know, those ghostly lights seen in forests and swamps to lead travellers astray? This is likely where ponyta gets its pale pastel colouring from, despite looking like a bootleg My Little Pony or something. These Colt Pixies are also associated with pucks. No, the other puck. Yes, mischievous little sprites. This could perhaps mean that Impidimp may have something to do with them, only time will tell. There's also a lot of other interesting cultural tidbits from the South which I may explore in the future, such as Hagstones, but that will probably be in conjunction with another piece of media unless they turn up in Pokemon somewhere. But I'm much happier that Scotland now has a Pokemon of its own, much like Wales, so it appears that the Celtic nations haven't been entirely forgotten through all this southern dominance, and this Ponyta will obviously have a Galarian Rapidash form to go along with it, possibly inspired after an Alicorn or winged unicorn, where it might become psychic fairy, but when I know exactly what it is, I'll make another video which goes over that design along with the ponyta. Anyways, what do you think of the new ponyta? Love it or hate it? Click the I in the top right to vote in the poll and let me know your thoughts on it in the comments. But I'm gonna head off now. I'm gonna go see if I can catch myself a unicorn. Grüßen Hüras, Bienachtlat.